So here is a very simple example using Ranko bars. We're looking for a signal whenever we have at least three bars in a row in the same direction, and then one bar closes in the opposite direction. So we have at least one, two, three, followed by at least one reversal bar. It works very well on a Ranko bar. So we've got some signals here. Here's an example of one that is excluded because we had only one, two, and not three in a row, so there's no signal here. So let's build that out. Let's create a new logic template. First condition uh, is the three bars in a row. That's really easy to build. Uh, we can just use the bar direction solver. And normally when you just use the bar direction, it's gonna give a signal that just matches the direction of the bar. Bars that closed up, get a long. Bars that closed down, get a short. But in the bar direction, there is a number of bar setting. If we set that to three, we are actually telling it to do what we want. We say, wait until there's at least three bars in a row before signaling. So we have one, two, three. We start getting a signal. Same thing here, one, two, three. And on every one of these bars, we're saying that there has been at least three three or greater uh, up bars in a row. And that's why these guys all count. So uh, this last bar is signaling long, saying that it is at least the third in a trend. And down here, here's the two. They do not get signals because there's there weren't at least three in a row. Okay. But now, remember what I said about timing or, or taking things one at a time. This next bar, this one that we're looking at as our short example, this bar right here has no idea that just a bar before it, there was a signal, right? There's a long signal here, but this bar has no idea. But this is the bar that we're actually going to be looking at. This is the one we expect a signal on because it's the one where there was a reversal. So in order to give this guy access to a condition that happened one bar before, we can use uh, what's actually just called displacement. So we can displace all our signals forward by one because we know it's always going to be the next bar who will uh, take it from there, okay? So we can use uh, a function node called the lookback node. Um, gives a couple options for doing things like displacement. Um, so actually the default settings are what we want. The lookback period set to one, that actually has no effect. Um, that's basically the current bar. But the displacement is what we're talking about because when we set it to one, it's going to push all our signals forward by one bar, which means give the next bar access to the, to the previous bar's signal. Okay, so let me run this through. So I'm gonna plug the bar direction into the lookback and watch, when I connect the lookback to the result node, watch all the signals, they're going to shift forward by one. Ready? There it goes. So every signal that was here is now here. So we had a long here, and that long was carried forward to this guy. So now this signal bar now has access to that previous bar signal. Now we can start playing with this, this one. Now, like we said, we want to know when it reverses, right? Um, so you could use another bar direction solver and maybe with an inverter on that, we can talk about that. But actually the inflection, since we're using Ranko bars, which have really distinct, it's, it's either going up or down, there's no confusion about that. We could use the inflection solver and literally just detect the inflection of price. So in here, we can change the type. We're not looking at an indicator. We're looking at the price and that's it. If I plug this in, we're going to get a signal every time the Ranko price bar reverses or inflects, okay? So now this price bar, this signal bar that we plan to use here has a short signal coming from that solver we just added. And the other rule that we had before gives us a long signal on this same bar, okay? So the only other step we need to take here is to swap one of those. Right, because if, if I were to take an AND node, which we will in a second here, if I say, give me a signal when this guy is true, which it is on that bar, and this guy is true, give us a signal. But the problem is that they're producing different directions. Uh, one condition is producing a long signal on this bar, and the other is producing a short signal because it reversed down. So now we just need to decide which direction should this signal be. Now for my example here, 
I want a short signal whenever it reverses down, right? Up three, down one, I want a short signal, okay? So let's just find the one that is producing a long. Okay, so the inflection is producing short. So that's this guy that's producing long. Let's swap that. So it's now giving us a short signal so that when we use the end node, they'll match up on the same bar. Okay, so I can take the last step here. So remember, we have the bar direction being funneled into the lookback node for the displacement. And so this is the last step in this little uh, step here. So we can swap that. So we have invert and swap. They do slightly different things, but swap is what we want here. Now, remember, we're just looking at the output from this guy. We've, we're running straight into the result notes. We're just looking at this displaced signal. Now, all the signals that were long are now short, and we've pushed it forward by one. So now this reversal bar has, has not only does it know that the previous signal uh, you know, indicated that there were three in a row, but we've swapped it, so now it matches the red, the, the short signal that's coming from our other condition. So now, since they're both producing short signals on that bar, when we connect this AND node back up, that's saying were there three in a row and also the price inflected, then, and since we swap this, now it matches, and so we're getting that. Short coming from both conditions, and so we're getting a short signal. And uh, when you're confirming this, uh, it's always a good idea to, to check a bunch of different examples. Make sure you didn't, um, you're not fooling yourself into thinking that you have a signal that's correct when maybe it's maybe you set it up wrong. Um, and one that I do want to check here is yes. So this bar right here, where it went up two, and then down one, we did not get a signal on this bar. That's good because remember we require three bars in a row before the reversal. And so we are not getting this inflection here because it didn't match our secondary condition. Okay, And never hurts to look back. Three down, one up. Three up, one down. Three down, one up. Two up. So we didn't get a signal. Three down, one up. Okay, now You can almost never over double check. Here's another two up. So there wasn't a signal on the down. Three up, one down. There it is. So hopefully that helps. Just a simple example uh, that we actually get a lot of questions related to this, where it's a Ranko bar and we want to know when it reverses. Um, my assumption is that Rankos are so stark in their trend um, or the, the uh, implied trend from the, just the nature of Ranko bars that uh, a lot of people like to see when it, when it does that jump. Um, now I do want to show one other um, extension to this to say, okay, well, Sure, we got a reversal, but I want to wait until the next bar in the same direction, basically confirming that reversal trend. I've seen this a few times where they say, okay, yeah, sure, a reversal is great, but I want to make sure it goes down one more bar before we actually uh, enter a trade or give myself information, however you're using these signals, whether it's automated or just to give yourself information. So what we can do is very similar. So we can take, so this is, this is, Condition one, basically. So step one, step two, combined, now we've got the inflection, okay? Now we can add another rule that says we want to know when the next bar is down also. So remember, we, we can just have a regular bar direction, plug that in, so now we know we have, we're have we getting a signal on this next bar. And so now, from our original inflection, our original rules we just created, we just need to push this forward by one more bar, saying that, okay, yes, we got three up, one down, and now we just need to push that forward to say it was down, now is it down again? Are we getting another bar in the same direction? So we could just use another look back node, okay? And so we'll take what we created earlier, that's this guy, push it forward, so now you can see the signal was on the reversal bar. Now it's pushed forward by one bar. So now this second bar knows that the bar before it counted for our first set of rules. So now we just need to verify that was this bar also down and the previous bar was down. Same thing here, down here. Was this bar a reversal up and the following bar continued in that trend direction? Then we get a signal. So now we simply combine this new rule 
with the direction of the current bar. And there we go. Now, this didn't really have an effect on this chart because they're, it's pretty common place, but we'll, we'll look around and see. But now we're saying three up, one down, followed by another down. Three down, one up, followed by another up. Okay, so that's just one way to confirm that trend. You may have, uh, if you're trading this automatically, you may have uh, lost that little bit of opportunity, but some people consider that worth it because you're confirming that trend. Now, again, we're not trade coaches, so we're not here to tell you that that's a good idea or a bad idea. I just have seen these ideas thrown out during my various demo sessions. I do a lot of uh, sales calls with brand new users who are considering Bloodhound and Blackbird for their trade system. And so uh, we talk about different ideas like this and it gives me the opportunity to kind of show them what's possible. So let me see if we can find an example. So two up, one down. Um, yeah, so three down, one up, followed by another up, right? Um, let's see if we can find another example. Yeah, so here we go. Here's one that was filtered out. So we got one, two, three up, followed by one down, but it wasn't confirmed by another down, and so we did not get the signal. So if you were trading this automatically, and this would otherwise be a short signal, you might consider this a, you know, wipe the brow moment because you're like, whoo, I didn't, you know, I, I avoided taking that short trade um, because maybe you would have gotten stopped out or, or whatever, however you plan to trade this, so. Um, anyway, let us know in the comments below uh, what your thoughts are on this simple idea, but also these short videos as well. Um, you know, we, we release weekly workshops um, uh, pretty regularly, uh, especially as the new year is coming in. But uh, let us know if you like these short little topics or if you consider this too simplistic. Was this idea too simple to bother watching a video about or was this instructive for you? Anyway, hope you're doing well. Have a great day.